Sophia saw the woman throw herself off the platform and under the rushing train at Clapham Junction at 5.23 p.m. On the very first afternoon, she was commuting back from her new job. She was frozen in terror. The crowds jostled her and she almost fell herself. She looked around, eyes were down, glued to phones, or gazing vacant at the signboards and trains. Nobody seemed to have noticed the woman. Sophia couldn't process what she had seen. A young woman her own age, wearing a yellow mac, glistening against the grey London sky, her face numb with misery, tumbling down the platform, the train swallowing her whole. No outcry. She peered down the tracks, not sure if she actually expected flying human tissue, blood and bones from under the train. There was none. Sophia went home, all evening, alone in her flat. Whenever she closed her eyes, whenever she opened them, she saw the woman throwing herself under the train. The next day, Sophia was occupied with her job. Some moments, she even forgot about the train. But soon enough, it was 5.23 p.m. She was once again on the platform. And there was the same woman, approaching the oncoming train. The shiny yellow Mac, a backward glance, looking through the abstract crowds, straight at Sophia. And then she fell, leaving no trace. No one noticed. Once home, Sophia googled frantically and soon found what she was looking for. Anna Karen Leonard jumping in front of the 523 at Clapham Junction 30 years ago. Sophia stared at the blurry features on the old newspaper on her screen. Features already familiar to her after two sightings on the platform. Why? And why could no one else see her? Alone in London, no friends, and not particularly good at or interested in anything, Sophia became obsessed with Anna Karen. But living before the dawn of life online, Anna Karen had died, leaving no trail of information. The 523 settings were the only connection Sophia had with her. The connection grew stronger every day. Anna Karen could see her the same as Sophia saw Anna Karen. The less interesting Sophia's real life, the more vivid became Anna Karen. Her gestures became more than a look. She smiled and waved at Sophia before propelling herself off the platform. Within a month, she was stretching out her yellow clad arm to Sophia. And then Sophia realized Anna Karen was her only friend. She no longer wanted to know why Anna Karen did that terrible thing. She just wanted to reach back and take her arm to talk with her, the only other person who saw her. And so, a couple of months after first seeing Anna Karen, Sophia stepped forward, took her arm, and barely even noticed, until it was too late, that Anna Karen was pulling her down. Sophia was falling. People were finally rushing and screaming. The train's roar filled her ears, but Anna Karen smiled, and Sophia felt happy.